video I'm going to discuss London dispersion forces, temporary dipole, and induced dipole forces. Naturally, atoms are neutral because electrons surrounding the nucleus are equally distributed. But as we know, electrons are constantly revolving around the nucleus. There will be a time when one side of the atom will have more electrons than the other side. The structure of the atom will be distorted. One side will have more electrons and the other side have less electrons. The side with more electrons would become partially negative and the side with less electrons would become partially positive. It is because electrons have negative charges. The atom is now considered as dipole. But there will be a time when these electrons will be equally distributed again. The positive and the negative poles will be eliminated and will disappear. Be reminded that this atom instantly become a dipole and instantly become a neutral atom. Since this dipole is temporary, so we call it as temporary dipole, it becomes a dipole when electronic cloud of a neutral atom is distorted for a time being or short-lived. How about induced dipole? How is it formed? Let's consider a temporary dipole. What happens if we bring a neutral atom near the temporary dipole? Observe carefully the positive side of the temporary dipole will attract the evenly distributed electrons in the nucleus of the neutral atom. The positive side of the temporary dipole pull the electronic cloud of the neutral atom. As a result, the structure of the neutral atom will deform or will be distorted because one side of the atom have more electrons than the other side now. The side with more electrons would become partially negative again and the side with less electrons would become partially positive. The neutral atom now becomes an induced dipole. There are now two polarized dipole, the temporary dipole and the induced dipole. The positive end of the temporary dipole attracts the negative end of the induced dipole. This force of attraction is what we call the London dispersion force. It is also called the Van der Waals forces. Take note 
that the London dispersion forces is weak and temporary intermolecular forces between particles. Where are London dispersion forces exist? The answer is they exist in everything, both in polar and non-polar molecules. Polar molecules like hydrofluoric acid and non-polar molecules like carbon dioxide. The exists in both polar molecules and non-polar molecules, but more dominant among non-polar molecules. In non-polar molecules like fluorine gas, chlorine gas, bromine gas, and I mean bromine liquid. Bromine is liquid and solid iodine. Again, I repeat fluorine gas, chlorine gas, liquid bromine, and solid iodine. These elements, fluorine gas, chlorine gas, liquid bromine, and solid iodine have London dispersion force, but they have different boiling points. Even if they belong to the same family, the halogen family, they have differences in their boiling points. Like, for example, for fluorine gas, it has a boiling point of negative 188 degrees Celsius. For chlorine gas, it has negative 34 degrees Celsius. And for liquid bromine, it has 59 degrees Celsius. Whereas for solid iodine, its boiling point is 114 degrees Celsius. The difference on their boiling points is attributed to the number of electrons on their individual atoms. For fluorine, why it has a lower boiling point? It is because it has only nine electrons in the nucleus of its atom. And for solid iodine, it has more electrons, 53 electrons in the nucleus of its atom. Therefore, when an element has less electrons, it has weak London force. And for elements with more number of electrons, it has a strong London dispersion force. London dispersion forces are caused by an even distribution of electrons within an atom. This results in a slightly negative and slightly positive charge on either side of the atom. A temporary dipole has been established. This temporary dipole can induce a temporary dipole on a neighboring atom or molecule. These London dispersion forces were named after the German physicist Fritz London who studied these forces.